uh, Reese is away this week, and we're uh, we're we're doing we're flying the three man uh, three man ship instead of four this week. Flying a ship, you know. We're flying a three man we're ship. We're flying. Well, we can fly. <laughs> As usual, we start off, you know, kind of however we we can. We start off with coffee. Yeah, we start off and with it coffee. Gets progressive. Not better. enough, clear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's let's roll right into the show today. Who do we have on as a guest today? Ben? Today we have my friend Shannon Clark from Listowel, Gory, I guess that area. Yeah, and we're talking a little bit about her experience being a surrogate for right a on. couple in Australia. Well, come yeah. on, let's let's get Shannon on here. Let's start. Let's talk about. Ooh, Shannon. We need like a canned applause for. Yeah. Us. <laughs> a clap for myself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, Patrick told us a little bit about this a while back, but, uh, so, tell us a little bit about what, what you, what the experience you had. Okay, well, so I've always thought about doing this since I was, I don't know, probably like 15 years old, so, I always wanted to have kids, and I can't imagine not having kids, so, um, I went through pretty nasty breakup so I was like you know what I'm having a baby for somebody and I like signed up that day um <laughs> slightly impulsive um it was a very planned impulse though so, um so I found a uh, agency in London it's actually at a Coburg um so close to London and I filled out this big huge survey and then they called and it was like a two-hour survey and then I kind of forgot about it for a little while and I was doing the Drayton Town garage sailing and got this email from them and they're like, these people want to be your, want you to be their surrogate. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so excited and they, they were really super good looking. So I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even read their profile. But anyways, and then I read their profile and I still agreed and I, so yeah, so we kind of got to know each other and... So how, there. maybe you said already, but how long was the process from like filling out the paperwork to actually getting that call? So that was in August mm -hmm. that we, that I filled it like kind of like signed up or whatever you call it. And then I, I feel like it was March or April. Okay. I want to say April. Okay. So enough time for me to kind of forget, not forget, but like You're not constantly thinking things. about it. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, we just kind of went from there and then, um, so are they like, so they're all the way in Australia. They were, yeah. is there like an online database of like potential surrogates? Yeah. And so yeah, it? it's kind of like actually on the movies, I guess you like flip through, it's like not a magazine, but like an online magazine. And then there's like every question they asked me from like literally my religion to like what I do for a hobby. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are my beliefs in many different things and. Um, and then they found this picture on Facebook, which was hilarious, because I'm sitting in Rob Savage's tattoo shop waiting to get a tattoo, beanie, no makeup, and they're like, we like her. <laughs> and I was like, oh God. But um, yeah, and then they just kind of picked me that way, and then they let the agency know, and the agency contacted me. Perfect. And I guess I could have said no, but they're amazing, so I didn't. So. Yeah. yeah. And so who are, who are the, the couple that you... Surrogate for. So their names are Jim and Jules Thompson Martin, um, and they just kind of combined their last names together. But uh, yay Australia for voting yes, <laughs> yeah. um, just lately. So that's kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, so. No, we actually have we have a message from them too, don't we? We do. Yeah. We do. Okay, we actually, do. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna pop over to the producer desk. Okay, yeah. Chat for a and, guys, and you guys, uh, you guys are gonna kind of keep staying in touch too. Yes. Really. You guys yeah. Talk quite like a bit. we're kind of like family now I think like yeah um Wilco is the baby and he's gonna call me Nene so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like an auntie my nephews came up with it so we just kind of I wonder if that's going. common for surrogates to keep in touch with their some yeah. of them do and some of them don't like on um, one of the questions for the profile was do you want to be able to be in contact with the person I wrote I would like to but it's not necessary yeah um because some people literally they will just have the baby and they're like okay thanks yeah peace yeah. <laughs> like never see them again yeah. which i think now now that i went through the process i'm glad that it worked out the way it worked out because i don't think that i would not want to see yeah it. totally so yeah so i get like weekly updates they send me a, a week picture they're gonna do it for the first week of his whole or first year of his life every single week they send me like a picture they're doing it for themselves too but i get a copy <laughs> and then um they just kind of like 
send little videos on like what he's doing and he, I guess he just rolled over the other day so yeah yeah so just like little neat things and it's kind of cool to that's that's so cool now I, this is the first time we're doing this so we'll try and get this to work but um, why don't you play us that video from the from right. couple we'll see how the audio goes also we're not really here all that okay so <laughs> Tom you're gonna have to tell us when yeah, it's Tom, you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Staring like a bunch That's of dude faces. Right. Unplug the audio from your stream there and so we can at least hear it when it does pop up. Well, it won't be done. So, uh, yeah, I'll start no. just keep running stuff. Unplug, just unplug it. <laughs> we won't be able to hear it. <laughs> changing the laws um, so we obviously didn't want to be um, caught there with a, a baby half-baked um, so we chat we was and I'm Jim and we're from Coburg Melbourne Australia hi everyone so uh, yeah our surrogacy journey started about five years ago it took us quite a long time we because um, we're a same-sex couple obviously we um, we couldn't use India uh, America was a, quite expensive for us um, and we were going to go to Thailand but Thailand changed its laws so we couldn't go there. Then so we, then uh, we went to um, Mexico um, and um, went down the road of creating embryos um, and then they talked about changing the laws um, so we obviously didn't want to be um, caught there with a a baby half baked. Um, so we we were then very fortunate enough to find out about Canada as being an option. Yeah, so we shipped our embryos up to Canada, <coughs> um, and then after a little while, we were introduced to Shannon. So we met her in a conference call. I was in interstate. Jules was in Melbourne. Shannon was in Gorry, and her surrogacy agent was, I guess, in Toronto. In Co Coburg, in I think. Coburg. Yeah. <clears throat> so a four-way conversation. Then we had a couple of weeks of getting to know Shannon um, pretty intensely. It's sort of like speed dating, but instead of, do you want to have a drink with me, it's, do you want to have a baby with me? <laughs> so that ups the stakes dramatically. And do you want to know everything about my life and everything about who I am and what yeah. I am? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, it was a pretty intense process, as you would expect. Um, you know, we felt like we couldn't help Shannon as much as we would have liked to, being on the other side of the world, so we did what we, what we could. Uh, Shannon is amazing. We're forever in eternally grateful and thankful, and um, we, we couldn't have done it without her. Yeah, and we're very lucky that we'll be in contact with Shannon so that we'll co our little boy, who's 20 weeks old, We'll um, <clears throat> get to know him uh, and have a better understanding of who who he is and how he came to be because we're a pretty modern family. And uh, he'll be the envy of all of his friends with his Canadian passport when he's able to fly to Whistler every year to work the snowfields. Yeah, and he's crying now because he's just woken up from his nap, so we're going to go and Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see you later. Bye. Thank you for staying tuned there while we had some technical issues, but, but we did get the video and they seem like the sweetest people in the world. Yeah, they're awesome. so I, nice. I, I, yeah. kind of, I, I kind of love them already. And I yeah. Don't know them. yeah. Yeah. So, so how, remind me again, so they actually, when you sign up for this, they kind of, that's like a broadcast of the whole world. They can come and find you as a Canadian mm -hmm. and just be like, well, oh. it's through a Canadian agency. So you have to actually like seek out in Canada at this agency. It's not... Because I'm looking for a surrogate, I can see you. It has to, you have to like find that agency, and then I'm on oh, their database. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
that's still it's amazing yeah. that like from across the world literally yeah. the other side of the world yeah. they mm -hmm. can find you and yeah. we, we were learning like when I was uh, shooting this what is love doc uh, we, we were interviewing a same sex couple and they said there's a lot of restrictions when it comes to adopting like some countries won't mm -hmm. even let you um, as a same sex couple have yeah. adopt it or yeah. go through a surgery. Yeah, well, yeah. that's kind of what they were saying in Thailand. Yeah. They, it was kind of good, and then they changed the laws. They were like, okay, we can't do it here. And then they went to Mexico, and as they were creating those embryos, they were changing the laws, and they're like, well, we can't just, like you said, have a baby half baked here and not be able to yeah. have mm -hmm. it. Like, you know, it is their genetics. And that's another thing. None of this baby was mine. It's super cute, and I like to claim that, but <laughs> it's not because of me. Um, so, you know, then we had to go through a whole bunch of like DNA tests and everything yeah. just to prove that it wasn't mine, even though we all knew it wasn't. But there's just a lot of hoops to jump through, um, far more than I ever imagined when I kind of came up with this brainwave of mine. Mm -hmm. So, um, but totally all worth it. Yeah. That's it's an amazing experience. I can't like I obviously I can't fathom even having a child to begin with, but to <laughs> to the, to be that kind of person who could do that for someone else is just amazing. Was that was that an emotional? experience like growing growing this baby and then sort of saying okay here yeah, yeah. so that's kind of like the well besides do you get paid and we don't yeah. for the record goodness of my heart <laughs> um that's the, the second main question is that uh like how did it feel when you had to give that baby away well i didn't give it away i gave it back mm -hmm. it's not mine but i think because you have to be in that headspace at the beginning and you're like this isn't my baby like there was no fun making this baby. It went in a little straw. <laughs> Mishka was there, my daughter. Yeah, she, was, yeah. she was there that day, so she was in the room and put the baby in. And uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, you just have to be in the right headspace. And the whole time, you just have to think, like, this isn't my baby, this isn't my baby. And I mean, there was a couple mornings I woke up and I kind of just forgot that I was pregnant. It was like, oh, wait, it's hard to roll over. That's right, I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, like, my doctor would be like, oh, how many kicks did it do today? I was like, like, I'm like I don't count that yeah. like and with my kids I remember like counting the kicks like making sure everything was happening and all this and this and this and it's not that I didn't care about it but it wasn't like I'm not emotionally invested in it mm -hmm. and like I was with my own so I guess that sounds semi cold hearted but I'm not really because it's sort of like it's sort of you need to distance yourself yeah. like you need yeah. to attach or yeah. else that would have been you would have been a wreck yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah well and when Wilco was born yeah um Jim like got right on the bed with me like I kind of like shoved my body over and he got right on the bed with me and literally Wilco is still attached to me by the umbilical cord and he's on Jim I did not I, I don't even know I think I was like the sixth person that held him oh yeah because it went right to Jim and then it went to the nurses and then it went to Jules and then it went to the doc like all these people and then finally I'm like oh hey how's it mm. going buddy <laughs> and um I think that helped too and even waking up that night we shared a hospital room waking up that night and the baby was crying I woke up right away and I thought Hang on, this isn't my job. Good night. <laughs> See, so I think it, and just knowing like they're such great parents, they woke up immediately, and I was like, they're gonna be fine. Like, yeah. They heard the baby kind of like having like a little pukey gurgle, and Jules woke up right away, and I was like, this is okay. And, yeah. And then I think I just felt super, feel super safe with these people, and they're just gonna be great. So yeah. yeah. That's you, really really. Yeah. Good. But I get to be the nene, so. The nanny that shows up to no birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Sends gifts from afar. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, like, you're, you're, every, every birthday you can just be the person who says like, oh, what gift did I give you this year? The gift of life. Yeah, remember me? Yeah. I did that. That's, that's that good. lasts forever. Why don't we get Mishka in here? Yeah, but here, I'll, I'll step out. You can, you can grab a seat in here. Okay. Slide on over. So, Mishka. Everybody, this is Mishka. Am I saying I'm saying your name right, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, what was um, what was your experience like when your mom was growing a baby? Um, I thought it was pretty cool because she was having a baby for somebody that couldn't. Yeah, absolutely. You get along pretty well with uh, with the parents too. With yeah. Yeah. They're like my uncles. They're like your uncles. Awesome. Do you call them uncle? Well, uh, no, I just call them. Jewish. Yeah. They send some pretty awesome presents our way sometimes, don't they? Yes. Like uncles would, yeah. Yeah. So were were you a little bit sad when mom had the baby and you had to um, no, not really, because I knew they were going to a good people. So. so it was the same kind of experience yeah. as your mom had, you know, yeah. Okay. Cool. And you guys did you still stay in touch with them too? Like yeah, yeah? over Skype or FaceTime, mm -hmm. something like that? Yeah. Awesome. 
Okay, cool. Maybe we could, uh, sorry, I'm talking off mic. That's okay. <laughs> come back, maybe, come maybe. back, Dylan. I went to do a, a I'm, I'm, I'm helicopter producing on Tom here. Uh, <laughs> but I was going to say, maybe we could have you back sometime, like, down the road, just sort of get an update. Yeah, like, and, for sure. Absolutely. And maybe we, we can get them to call in. I know it's like the opposite time there. That's yeah, like, they'll be sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get them to wake up in the middle of the night because they're already up in the middle of the night anyways, right? Maybe Actually, maybe. I will say this. They are <laughs> the luckiest parents in the world. That kid sleeps nearly through the night. Like, yeah. He goes to sleep at like 10, 30, 11, wakes up at like 5. And I'm just like, you're so lucky. <laughs> we went there, my sister and I went there, and I think we heard the baby cry twice. And not even like a real cry. Yeah. It was like a... <laughs> this is not fair. someone sitting in a rocking chair. Like, yeah. What is yeah. It? So, it was awesome. Yeah, because I thought, oh, we're staying with them. It's gonna be bad. It's like we're never gonna sleep. Didn't hear a peep from that kid, and just we kind of took him everywhere because they wanted to show us around Australia. Yeah. And kid just slept in the car and was like, great. Well, we went out and yeah, yeah we went to a gin distillery with that baby. And it was just super cool, super chill. And, and you kind of just won the lottery, didn't you? Because now you get to go to Australia. <laughs> yes, uh, she, she came up with a five-year plan the other day. I don't even have a five-year plan for this. Um, she came up with a five-year plan, and in her five-year plan, she wants to like go babysit for the summer in Australia for them. That's so, a great plan. Maybe we'll have, be having yeah. you back on to talk about that. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can t tell me all about your Australian experience. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. This has been really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Completely, uh, the, the stories that are going on in our community that we don't even know about. It's really awesome. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. And we're going to really quickly go to a, uh, a little video break, uh, show you some of our artist profiles, and we'll be back with Slade Miller to play you a couple songs. Stay tuned. Good, good. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> I didn't want to like you, like, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Was that kind of what you were expecting? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I'm an artist. I, uh, I paint. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do so many things. <laughs> it's like, show us. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is an intuitive piece of art I did for the women's shelter. We, we sold tickets and it was auctioned off and raised money. And I have these as prints that are available. This is a daisy painting. <laughs> Isn't it sweet? It is sweet. I had it up for sale and I was so happy it didn't sell. There was about three buyers that were, were considering it. It's one of my very, very first pieces and it's one of my favorites. Do you know why? Why? Well, it just exudes joy. I just love the happiness in it. Is it hard for you to let go of paintings after you make them? That's a them? great question. This dancer, and I think because after it was created, I, I gifted it so that it could be auctioned off, but I feel it was like a self-portrait, so. Do you dance, too? I, I dance, I do dance. <laughs> 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 <Whoa. laughs> I do a lot of abstract waters that I sell at the Southampton Art Gallery. I love creating these pieces. And what's so fun about them is they're unexpected and I really enjoy watching the, the paint flow across the canvas. It's one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of famous for. Do you know why I'm famous? Do you know how I know that I'm famous? How do you know you're famous? I walked into a restaurant a few months ago and I heard a little voice over by the table whisper to their mom, that's Susan Tsai! <laughs> So exciting. Most of my work is done in my studio, on my table. I switch from easel to the table to the floor, twirl it around in the air like a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> right Actually, my most favorite is over there. This one that we just yeah. did here? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no this, one. this one. Okay. This is my favorite painting. I love it. <laughs> I gifted this painting to myself for my birthday last year. It's mine. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> so I do women's retreats. Uh, I call them creative play. And basically it's retreats um, that tap into that inner child. Mother Earth is definitely uh, my inspiration. So most of my work, even if it's abstract, has some sort of element of nature in it, whether that be trees or leaves or water or fire. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, I think what I would like to do is instill in others um, the beauty of tapping into that creative spirit that's available to all of us and to provide an experience that allows that to happen. For people to just show up and be them and know that it's really a great experience to do so.
Is that what he said? Be be be. I bleed, I bleed, bleed. That's all, folks. <laughs> I bleed. Yeah, thanks for tuning in to Cahoots Entertainment. It's been a blast here. I hope I get to come back again soon. Thanks, guys. Everybody's like, how you feeling? <laughs> Die. <laughs> now I'll stop being funny and be weird and awkward now. Isn't that our chosen career path? That's as soon as, <laughs> cam as soon as the camera goes on, it's like, oh, oh this will, yeah, this will look amazing. Yeah, it looks better than everything. Slade Miller from King Kong. <laughs> Queen from a movie scene I said don't mind What do you mean I am the one Who dance on the floor In the rounds She told me her name Was Billie Jean And she caused a scene And every head turned with eyes I dreamed of being the one Who dance on the floor In the rounds Careful what you do, the lies become the truth. Billy Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl that claims that I am the one. The cat's not my sign. For 40 days and for 40 nights, all I was on a sign. But who can stand when she's in demand of schemes and her plans? Go on and dance on the floor in the rounds But take my advice Just remember to always think twice Me and my baby, we danced till three Then she looked at me She showed a photo, my baby cried His eyes looked like mine Go on and dance on the floor in the rounds facilitate uh, meditation and yogic experience for uh, the wellness of the body and mind. I get to facilitate people becoming their authentic and genuine self and, and empower them to change their own lives. It just breeds this in immense compassion and gratitude. I've been officially teaching yoga for se over seven years now. I teach a wide range, everything from restorative yoga to uh, vigorous vinyasa, you know, 
arm balances and intensity to very sweet, gentle, soothing classes, paired with some great music at times and some humor. Just a genuine holding of space for people and, and their needs. We live in a pretty overwhelming and very stressed out, high intensity, high octane uh, world. And this is a, a great way for people to just spend a little bit more time with themselves, to find a little bit more strength and, and to be, uh, be in their bodies, be, be working towards that wellness and equilibrium of, of body and mind. My purpose is to encourage people to live a full and authentic life, to be skillful and mindful in uh, their daily lives, to serve the people that I love and that I grew up with. My biggest role models, uh, I've always enjoyed the rebels, uh, the people who stub for, for great causes, obviously people like Martin Luther King, and then some off-beaten people like Jack Kerouac, my mother of course, my, my father. Uh, my classes are different as, as I really emphasize the mental aspect, the, the mental health piece. We still do obviously the physical side of yoga, but but it's working towards finding um, your true self in the sense of you know, being in the present moment, putting you through challenges, but uh, finding the sweetness as well. We don't shy away from any of the facets or flavors of life and a lot of fun. It's very personable. I get to know my clients instead of you just being you know, a paying customer that walks in and, and I don't know your name. This is something that I love doing for doing it, not for the money. And that's what makes it really different. It has its own world and flavor, even, even at six o'clock in the morning. I love it, I love what I do, and I get to be there for people and, and, um, and facilitate this experience that, that uh, uses science and uses the philosophy of yoga and, and uh, meditation and Buddhism and, and all the other philosophies of the world. We don't shy away from anyone or anything, and it can be practiced by anyone. Of any idea, philosophy, creed, faith, it's, it's for everyone, and that's the thing. And we're back. Oh, hey! Hi! <laughs> Welcome I'm back. back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so we're back with Slade. That was awesome. Thank you. I that was a great cover. <laughs> Thanks. So Slade is a multi-instrumentalist. She also teaches at Tech Studio, where we are right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Taught us everything we know. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Um, so you play, you play piano and guitar. That was obviously Slade yes. playing a guitar tune. After this little chat here, we're going to hear more from Slade. Yeah, I've got a question right now. What's your piano? Oh, Do you, have you ever tried combining two and playing a guitar? Yeah. Have you ever played a keytar? No. No? Do you know I what it is? All no. Guys, it's like, and it was really, really <laughs> hip in the 80s. So it was like, you, yeah, you play it like Do a guitar. Do they sell them? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not, not as, not as cool. I mean, yeah. you probably yeah. had to get it shipped in yeah. specifically for you if you wanted one, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know a guy who sells instruments, you could probably find someone. <laughs> um, what do you <laughs> play more? Guitar or piano? Um, piano probably. Yeah? Yeah, just because I've grown up playing that, so. Right on. Yeah. And I, uh, do you write a little bit? Um, okay, when I was younger, I used to write. Yeah. But then, as I've gotten older, I just haven't really had time for it, because I've been so busy with, like, hockey and basketball and school and That's fair everything enough, else. Yeah. So, but maybe in a couple years I'll start again. Yeah, because you're, you're in high school. Yeah, grade 11. Grade 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's already impressive enough that you're already a multi-instrumentalist. I am a multi-instrumentalist, <laughs> but I, like, I would say that all of those instruments, aside from guitar, I'm a hacker at. So, like, to hear you play guitar, like, at, at least as well as I can, and then <laughs> the, know that you're about to play a song on the piano, I'm just a little bit jealous. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and piano's her main instrument, too. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. All, all the young people we have on, I'm like, why are they already so much more talented? Why are they so good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Do you have any gigs or anything coming up that you're playing at? Or? Um, no, not really. Not really? Yeah, yeah. just busy with life. School. Yeah, pretty much school. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> now, if like, do you ever record? Like, I know we've recorded some stuff for the Pick Studio albums, but do you, have you ever like thought about recording anything? I've thought about doing it before. I just I need enough time to kind of think about what song I'd want to do, and then if I'd also want to write my own song, because mm -hmm. I feel like it's more unique if you do your own song. Because covers are cool and stuff, but you have to make them different. Gotta start somewhere. You have to make them your own. Yeah. Yeah. Bob Dylan's first album is almost entirely uh, covers, and the one song that he wrote is uh, just someone else's chord progression and melody, and he just changed the words. Oh, really? So, I mean... <laughs> I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, like, so everybody starts somewhere. He's and one he's, of the most iconic He has a Nobel Prize for writing like, songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, if you start out, just put it, put it out there, and then people are like, I like that sound. Mm -hmm. Then you can start writing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so who are, who are some artists that you admire? Um, I, like, I like a lot of 80s music. Yeah? So, yeah, so Billy Joel, Elton John, um, The Beatles... 
That's yeah. probably like the older stuff that I like. Newer stuff, probably Ed Sheeran, Tori Kelly. I don't know Tori Kelly. Um, she does a We're lot not of... hip. No. Oh yeah, she has a lot of like popular songs, but she does um, a lot of acoustic too, so I'm into acoustic. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Now, so what's the next song you're going to be playing for us? Can't Help Falling In Love With You by Elvis Presley. I love it. I love that song <laughs> so much. Well, do we want to go ahead, we're, so we'll cut back to another commercial break real quick, and then we'll come back for the song. Stay tuned to hear more from Slade. Thank you, Slade, for coming out and no talking to us, a bunch of idiots here, <laughs> <laughs> running a sinking ship. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'm back. Cool. Let's do another one like that. Okay. My name is Beth French. I work at Community Living King Carden and District here in town. My role is Community Engagement Coordinator, which means that I help individuals with disabilities uh, get involved in the local community and also look for ways that our organization can partner with local businesses and, and other organizations. So we're doing the All Abilities Beachside Run next uh, Sunday, September 3rd, which is a really fun event. There's like a 5K, a 10K, a kids and family fun run, and then a fundraising walk. We have several individuals that we support that, that do the race or the walk. One individual has been doing several races this year. She competed in the triathlon and she'll be doing the 5K race with one of her friends. What is the most rewarding part of your job? The most rewarding part, I think, is helping people to achieve their dreams. I mean, that sounds really kind of big and broad, but what's really exciting is working with people, helping them realize what they're actually capable of and make the connections with the community so that they can find a place to learn new skills or try something that they've never done before, whether that's acting in a play or learning a new musical instrument or volunteering in a way that they never thought they had. That's what's really interesting is, is seeing people really achieve something that they, they weren't sure that they could and just seeing how that changes their whole lives. So in King Carden, we support over 150 individuals and families. We have a, a broad range of people that we support. Some individuals live in one of our group homes, which they receive 24-hour support. And other individuals live in their own apartments or homes in the community, and they just receive support when they need it. As well, we support a lot of families with anything that they might need, whether that's early childhood and intervention or support with the school system to make sure that they're getting the learning supports that they need. So yeah, so there's a lot that we do. Yeah. I actually started with community living when I was 17. I was the summer student, ran um, the Youth Connection Summer Program. Really opened my eyes to the, I don't know, to just the fun that it was and the meaning in the work, I think, that was really interesting. And I got to know a lot of people and that's what, that's what I really get out of my job is getting to know people and making those connections with them. We kind of say in our industry, we We'd love to work ourselves out of a job. We'd love that more and more community members get to know people we support, get to appreciate them the way a lot of family members do or their friends are willing to provide that kind of just casual support in the community if they're joining a new rec league or a new club and kind of don't need us anymore. It's strange, I guess, but it would be so wonderful if everyone in the community was just able to recognize the capacity that these individuals that we support have and how limited support they actually need in most social settings. And that would be something that I would just absolutely love. When I, I have an idea or I have something that I'm committed to, I get very, very passionate about it. So Cahoots, you guys did a series of four videos for us, and that's a big, Part of what I see as my role in community living is kind of helping people to, to tell their stories, to get people um, interested in, in who they are and what they do. So incredible. The people we support are so, so, so proud of them. We talk about them all the time in our staff meetings or with people we support. They always have them on their iPads ready to go to show strangers. I think what's really neat about those videos is how, how dignified that they are, how authentic they are, and how they really allow a group of people who typically don't get to share their stories in a way that really allows people... And we're back with Slade Miller for another musical performance of an Elvis Presley tune. <laughs>
show for november 19th for cahoots live uh tune in next week uh we're live every sunday at noon thanks for joining